It's been a while since we looked at how artificial intelligence is going to kill us all. And I have to say, AI's made remarkable progress at taking over the world. The first good news for AI was that pretty much the first thing Trump did after his inauguration was to revoke an executive order from the Biden administration on addressing AI risks. The purpose of that order was to require AI companies to conduct safety tests if their systems pose risks to US national security, the economy or the public. Seems like a reasonable idea to me, but it's gone now. Then the Chinese company DeepSea came out with their reasoning model R1 that rapidly outcompeted everyone else in terms of bang for the buck. In response, Americans are largely giving up even pretending to be cautious about AI development. It's all about competition now. Safety is falling by the wayside. At the end of January, Stephen Adler, an OpenAI safety researcher, left the company. In a post on X, he wrote, I'm pretty terrified by the pace of AI development and that the global race towards artificial general intelligence is a very risky gamble. He isn't the first to leave OpenAI for that reason. By August last year, reportedly about half of the AI safety people had left the company. Several of them publicly criticized OpenAI's low safety standards. It didn't help that it turned out DeepSeek has basically no safety measures, which is one way to cut costs. A group of AI safety researchers used an automated attack methodology on DeepSeek R1, which tested it against 50 random prompts that include cybercrime, misinformation, illegal activities, and general harm. In their own words, the results were alarming. DeepSeek R1 exhibited a 100% attack success rate meaning it failed to block a single harmful prompt. Other groups drew similar conclusions. DeepSeek also leaked some user information into a publicly visible database. One could say it's open source with an open sync. A week ago, Google dropped their pledge to not use AI for weapons or surveillance because I guess they don't want to lose out on business. Because just a few days earlier, OpenAI had announced that they'll support American national labs among other things, in matters of nuclear safety. Yes, you heard that right. In a press release, OpenAI writes, the labs also lead a comprehensive program in nuclear security focused on reducing the risk of nuclear war and securing nuclear materials and weapons worldwide. This use case is highly consequential and we believe it's critical for OpenAI to support it as part of our commitment to national security. I'd argue it's somewhat premature to put AI in charge of nuclear weapons before it's learned to not you know, make up shit, but I guess I just don't have the right entrepreneurial spirit. One who certainly has the right spirit is Elon Musk, who's currently busy taking over the US government. Thomas Shett, a former Tesla engineer and now head of the technology transformation services, has declared that the path to government efficiency goes through AI. According to 404 Media, he said that this would, among other things, include AI AI coding agents that write government software. Meanwhile, on the research side of things, scientists have found that even the current large language models, dumb as they still are, are good at in-context scheming, by which they mean it's not difficult to instruct the models to lie to a third party, a feature that I have no doubt will make them greatly useful in government. Another group has found that several large language models, when instructed to adjust their guardrails for harmful content, will merely pretend to do that, a tactic they call alignment faking. In this test, they told the models which queries were part of the training. The models then did as instructed on those training queries, but not on others, reasoning that this way the model weights wouldn't have to be adjusted. In other words, the models resist being retrained. The authors explain it this way. While we made alignment faking easier by telling the model when and by what criteria it was being trained, we did not instruct the model to fake alignment or give it 
hit any explicit goal, as future models might infer information about their training process without being told our results suggest a risk of alignment faking in future models. And then I have a final cheerful paper for today, this one from a group of AI safety researchers who warned that the most likely way things will develop is not a sudden takeover, but a gradual disempowerment of humans. They say that what's going to happen is that we'll let AI perform increasingly more tasks to manage financial, political and economic systems. If AI is more efficient than humans, and if we demand AI to be efficient, then we're engineering ourselves out of existence, not because of the way we code AI, but by the tasks we give AI. This unfortunately sounds all too plausible to me. I'm not an AI doomist. However, I think we need to take this seriously. Humans are bad at foreseeing emergent behaviors in systems with large numbers of interacting agents, whether those are humans or AIs. And once we have more or less autonomously working AI agents all over the place, intelligent or not, it'll not be as easy as pulling the plug. So what are we to do? Maybe we could ask an AI. Artificial intelligence is really everywhere these days. If you want to learn more about how neural networks and large language models work, I recommend you check out the courses on Brilliant. Brilliant offers courses on a large variety of topics in science, computer science and mathematics. All their courses have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. Whether you want to know more about large language models or algebra, want to learn coding in Python or know how computer memory works, Brilliant has you covered. It's a fast and easy way to learn and you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. And they're adding new courses each month. I even have my own course on Brilliant. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with a course on quantum computing or differential equations. And of course, I have a special offer for viewers of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabine or scan the QR code, you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days. And you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.